actually. Aloha, thank you for joining us again today with SBA. And today I'm gonna to be talking with Jay Fidel about some of the things that are going on with SBA. Um, you know, we talk a lot about what makes small businesses successful and um, what it takes to be successful in small businesses and how we communicate that out to the community. And one of the best ways that SBA has done that is with our annual SBA Small Business Awards. Nominations are just around the corner, so we thought we'd talk a little bit about that today because on this program, we're also featuring some of those small businesses who've been honored and recognized for their accomplishments through the SBA Awards over the years. This program has been going on for probably about 35 years as the President of the United States has always celebrated a National Small Business Week to honor the accomplishments, the contributions to the economy, and just what small business in America is all about. And we see outstanding achievers here in Hawaii, uh, and this legacy goes on and <coughs> on. The SBA awards are among the most uh, prestigious that we see in the islands, and I think some of that has to do with our process. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the awards, what they're for, who can apply, how to apply, and just you know why this process is, uh, makes such credi credible awards and recognizes the right people in our small business community for the right things that small businesses do. So Jay yeah, is joining I, me I to talk about that. I was telling you before the so, show that um, the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum had its uh, Energy Day on the 16th of August, mm -hmm. and they gave six awards out. I mean, and uh, this, was, this has been the last two or three years, but mm -hmm. it's, it's growing. It's a growing feature of what they do and why. Because um, A, it recognizes achievement, it mm -hmm. recognizes commitment, and B, it also tells everybody that the people who won have done a good job, and that they also ought to consider being committed that way. They ought to try to get an award themselves. Mm -hmm. And this raises all boats when you do that. Right, it's a very inspiring thing. It is. I think you hear other people's story and say, I can do that, I believe that. Yeah. Um, and it's a good thing to replicate. So people also learn. They can find mentors through the program and we've got, you know, a long, long legacy of doing this, uh, these programs, and we do. We see remarkable stories come out. We see community leaders step up uh, out of the ranks of these award winners who kind of gain their confidence as well or increase their confidence in some different areas. So we find it's a, a great thing for SBA to be able to do, but it's also a very worthy accomplishment. Um, one of the things that people are always amazed at is our process that we go through um, because there is some serious vetting. It's not like a, a, just like a puff piece or anything to no, get sure one of these not. awards. So how tough is it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, um, it just takes it does take a little bit of time for the nomination. So we'll be opening the nominations in middle of September. Uh, and then they run, the nomination term goes for a couple of months, so they'll be coming into our office around November 11th or so. But uh, we do ask for our small business awards. There are a number of different categories. We recognize the small business person of the year, which is probably the, the, the big cheese, the, the biggest award that we have. We recognize an entrepreneurial success, um, and that award is looking at somebody who has started as a small business but have gr grown their business into a larger business, no longer eligible for SBA assistance, mm -hmm. but have gotten SBA assistance at some point uh, in the life of their business. So they're great role models. They've created a lot of jobs, different things like this. One of the things that does make our small business awards different is we do look at financial criteria. We do ask for kind of abbreviated financial data, um, revenues, um, you know, your... You're looking pre, for pre, dynamics. You're yeah, looking for so a, a business that is growing, yeah, they're improving, looking growing, doing it the yeah, right way. Each, one, each award is a little bit different, but that financial piece, what are, your incre what are your revenues over the past three years? How have they increased? What are your sales? What is your pre-tax income? Um, how many jobs have you created? So t sometimes people are very sensitive about reporting that data, but sure. we also keep it very close to the vest. We treat it with a great deal of confidentiality. You shouldn't worry about the competition taking see. advantage of it. Yeah, them. no, we don't uh, disclose any proprietary information, but we need the financials for the uh, Small Business Person of the Year, the Entrepreneurial Success, the Exporter of the Year, 
the Young Entrepreneur of the Year, and the Family Owned Business. So each one's a little bit different. And we have, we out of all of our nominations, we vet them and kind of scrub them up. We have a committee that comes in, very different personalities and people. From the community. From the community, bankers, small business owners who've gone through the process before. It sounds like Shark um, Tank. I, and, you know, you just don't have to come in and demo that, you know. <laughs> uh, you, don't, you don't have to get on stage until you've won. But, uh, you know, they, they come through and some of these guys are accountants and CPAs, so they're looking at the numbers. Other people are community leaders. They're looking at how you give back. Some of them are involved in human resources and unions and they, they are looking at how you treat your employees. So it's a real comprehensive picture um, for each one of these small business awards. Um, but it's been really gratifying and, and some people will say, please let me judge again this year because this is, is just so motivating. It's so cool to see what these small businesses are really doing and how involved they are in their community. It establishes uh, aspirational values. Mm -hmm. You know, establishes the, um, you know, the things we ought to strive for mm -hmm. in this business community. It brings the community together, doesn't it? It really people does. People get to know each other, they get to admire each other, they get to mentor and mentee mm -hmm. each other. Mm -hmm. All that is a positive thing to bring it together. And we're very inclusive because we do pull in all of the islands. We do make sure that we are uh, hearing about what's going on in Kauai and who's really working with the community, who's excelling in their business, what projects are going on, and we look at all different kinds of industries. We've had so grocers and retail. So um, I apply, am I, any industry works, I mean anybody doing business work or, for example, if I'm struggling, mm -hmm. should I apply or maybe I should wait? You should probably wait if you're really having, um, you know, you haven't found your footing yet, mm -hmm. and maybe you're not uh, considering yourself a going concern, because we do look at your staying, for the Small Business Person of the Year, it's staying power, uh, increase in revenues, creation of jobs, how many jobs have you created? And we have winners who have maybe created over, you know, a period of time, or four to five years, may have created five or six, seven jobs, and that's a big gain for their industry. But we also have people um, who have created over 200 jobs. You know, so they're really, uh, you know, making a, a big impact. But seven jobs, you know, in Kamuela can be a lot of Absolutely, jobs. Yeah. You know, it makes, it, it's the impact on your community. So it kind of scales itself. So Yeah, it's a relative thing. But, it's look at all the facts yeah, and circumstances. Uh, those CPA judges are going to look at, you know, your revenues and say, okay, yeah, you are increasing year over year. Or you've reinvested in your business. You're being a smart business owner. What are you doing? You're taking all the money out of your business. Um, so they do, I mean, the numbers do tell a story. So... Um, do you have runner, runners up? I mean, is there one winner? Um, or do you have a winner and a runner up? Something like that? Our, our process, we have objective scoring. So out of, we have about 14 judges. And they all come in and they score the nominations, uh, all individually, numerically. And so then we, we figure, we calculate the scores, and we pull the top top uh, candidates based on That's those it. scores. The top candidate wins the award. Not always. We have a discussion about oh, that, to too. Oh, subjective. You know, so there is that factor of, you know, what did you put into your nomination? What is impressing the judges? So we have a lot of really close ones. This year, the first time ever, we had the Small Business Person of the Year had an exact tie numerically on Maui. And the conversation with the judges couldn't break that tie. They couldn't pick one over the other. They were both very, very different so, industries. Two awards. One was one was in uh, restaurant and hospitality industry and growing, creating a lot of jobs. The others was a much longer term, steady contracting business who did um, uh, air conditioning, steel um, format, uh, manufacture, and things like this. So um, they were very, very different, but they couldn't decide. We went to the whole board and had everybody vote, and they were just dead Let's even. Do. So we, we had co-winners for the Good. first time ever. Good answer. And it was, <laughs> it was the right thing to do. They're both, you know, just solid uh, businesses and, and proud of their awards and excited about their, their next ideas. We do look at the innovativeness of the product or service. It's really important. You know, if you just kind of, you know, hanging on, you know, and doing the same thing, either tell us why you're just doing the same thing and why that makes sense, 
or tell us how internally you've changed or innovated. Yeah. And, you know, so small Sometimes business owners, it's real value that nobody can see. Exactly. So you, so you look closely. Sometimes a lot of it is, is internally focused and it may be in a, their management systems, it may be their human resources, it may be what they're doing with their employees that you may not know outside the company, mm. but you still see a strong, steady business going on. So the, is the, is this is largely paper. I mean, I, I submit an application mm -hmm. uh, to be considered for the award. Yep, there there's, there's the application. There's there the application. Right. This is just a four-page application. There's some very simple information on it. Uh, and usually there are four or five criteria for each award. And you just get a little paragraph to describe it. A lot of our nominations come from the bankers. You know, that's, they've been a real solid community. Mm -hmm. We have a Nominators Hall of Fame that's been around for about 25 years to recognize these people who've done a lot to make uh, the success of our small business community more visible. So we've got staying power growth in your number of employees, increase in sales. So you have to write up subjective answers. And you just answers, write, yeah. write that up, you know, a little commentary. Response to adversity, like a natural disaster or a downturn in the economy. And then we just have you verify that you're submitting the information. You have a sponsor generally. You can self-nominate. That's perfectly fine. Or you can have somebody else nominate you. You both sign off and um, send it over to the SBA. And we they don't have to be SBA clients or anything. No. You, they have, don't have to have any relation with you. No. It, it, we, um, there's only one award that we, we, we ask that you've had SBA assistance, but it can be any small business. You don't have to work with us. You don't have to know for us. You may have to look up our address. But, um, that, and that one is the Entrepreneurial Success Award mm. the, for Couple that small to big. Well, one is, um, uh, what about nonprofits? Mm -hmm. the, the nonprofits can apply for this? For most of these awards, you have to be a for profit business for SBA there, there awards. Go, income and all yes. that. Yeah. You can be the, entre the entrepreneur, you can be the exporter of the year. An exporter of the year award honors an individual who generates a good portion of their revenue from exporting outside the United States. We're looking at, you know, outside, not just outside Hawaii to the West Coast, could be Canada, but you do want to be exporting outside the United States, you know, um, working with that trade deficit, bringing more dollars to the United States. That includes, exporting can include tourism, tourism, educational tourism, cultural tourism, mm -hmm. sports mm -hmm. tourism, you know, anything along that line. So I, I write this up and mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm tooting my own horn when uh -huh. I do that. Um, and I'm saying, I'm telling you, this is this is real. This uh -huh. is true. I'm not I'm not shading it. It's true. Uh -huh. Now now, are you going to talk to me? Are you going to say, Jay? Let me talk to you about what you wrote down here. I gotta have I have some questions about the, you know what you submitted. Does that happen? Okay. Well, if you self nominate and you write me a fairy tale, we'll probably. <laughs> <laughs> Fairy tales are nice. Fairy tales, <laughs> you know, it has its time and place. Sure. You know, um, we have you verify uh, that you know the information that you've submitted is factual, and then if it if it pencils out, you know, we do scrub them, so we do check your NAICS code. There there are some facts we do chase down mm -hmm. with this, and look at a vetting process and, and kind of scrub the nominations to make sure that everything kind You're of putting fits. Putting an imprimatur on it. We, yes. We've looked at this and. It, Whatever they they said, here's here's mm -hmm. it's true. Yeah. The other thing I want to ask is, um, mm -hmm. you know, it reminds me of a situation where, yes, you can have a sponsor, but suppose I have a lot of friends in the community, uh -huh. and you know I'm a popular fellow, mm -hmm. and I want to give you five sponsors, mm -hmm. or ten, or fifty sponsors. Is that going to make it better for me? Nope. <laughs> okay. It's it's first one. The first one, one that comes okay. in, you know, they can all vouch for you and they could make statements, but I'll tell you a little bit more about that when we come back from this day, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Aloha. This is Reg Baker with Business in Hawaii. We're a show that broadcasts every Thursday at 2 o'clock. We would love to hear from you, and you can reach us in several different ways. We have a hotline that you can call in at 415-871-2474, or you can email us at thinktechhawaii.com, or you can tweet us at thinktechhi. Looking forward to hearing from you and seeing you on our next show. Aloha. Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard. I'm the host of Center Stage, which is on Wednesdays at 2 o'clock here on Think Tech. On Center Stage, I talk with artists about not only what they do and how they do it, 
but the meat of the conversation for me is why they do it, why we go through this. A lot of us are not making our livings doing this, and a lot of us would do this with our last dying breath if we had that choice. And that's what I love to talk to people about. I hope you enjoy watching it, and I hope you get inspired because there's an artist inside you too. Join us on Center Stage at 2 o'clock on Wednesdays. Bye. Talk about preparing for the storm. Okay. Yeah, so we're back again talking about the 2017 SBA Annual Small Business Awards, some of the most prestigious awards for small businesses here in Hawaii, and recognizing a variety of businesses, all different industries, all different types from across the state. As long as you're a small business that's doing well, um, has a likelihood of success, and uh, you're willing to tell your story and share it with all of us to be inspired and motivated to do better things here in Hawaii. So we're back with Jay, who has 50 friends who are going to nominate him for our SBA awards. Again, the nomination forms will be available in the next week at our office. If you're interested in getting more information, you can just call us over at the SBA Hawaii District Office at 541-2990 or email me. That's fine, too. We'll get you a copy of the nomination forms. Very simple forms, about four pages. And it just is a basically what are you doing with your business, how do you measure success, and some very simple information. If you have a lot of people who are vying to nominate you, you really have to work with them to pick one. The write-ups do make a lot of difference in what you're going to be conveying to oh, the judges. They, they write up stuff, too. They nominate they can. you and they say why. Right. It isn't ha doesn't have to be self-nominated. Typically, we get almost 100 nominations every year. And in the majority of those come from bankers who are recognizing their customers or their clients. And they have a lot. They're pretty savvy about what's ticking with your business. Um, so they'll identify a candidate who's doing some interesting things, who um, is growing their business. So all, they hit all of those measures or criteria. And it may be, uh, the bank may also encourage them to recognize sure, small good business. So it's good, it's good for their customers. So um, Suppose I win. You, if you Suppose win. Suppose I win. Mm -hmm. And um, now, uh, you know, you've, you've vetted me with the committee. You've checked my, my, my bona fides, my, yes. my, my presentation. Mm -hmm. um, you're satisfied. I win. I, I get right. the points, I guess, and I win. Yeah. Um, what happens? Is there a, a... You want the good news first or the bad news? No. <laughs> I want, I want to, really? It's bad news? <laughs> what, what, what? No, no. It's, I don't think it's bad news. I mean, we do try to, um, we celebrate, we start the nominations in the fall. They are, they go through the, the selection process that usually starts about December and finishes in January. But we also do have, since these are SBA uh, hosted awards, we do vet them, you know, to, through our EEO office and some things mm, like that to make sure, sure that, you know, your business you is be legit, embarrassed. you know, so, and, and we don't want to embarrass anybody else either. Mm -hmm. We haven't ever had any problems with that at all, except it does make some people a little bit nervous, but, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's a very simple process and um, it just does assure us that we made the best choice. Mm -hmm. um, and then we start, we make the announcement in the early spring. And then we have a series of activities or events that, you know, to honor them. The state winners go and are recognized by the governor and the state legislature. We have uh, a number of events, a big annual statewide small business awards luncheon um, where we bring all the awards in or uh, well, award winners from all the islands in. Because when you, as we look at the scores and we, the judges submit their evaluations, we select at the county level and from each of our county winners or our top winners, we select state winners. State winners go to a regional competition oh. and often regional competitions oh. and every small business person of the year for the state of Hawaii goes to Washington, D.C. to compete for the national title. Ray Jardine, who was on, on this program a couple weeks ago, yeah. was the state of Hawaii small business person of the year um, for 2016. He went to Washington and he was just knocked out because he was named second runner up. So that means our small business person was evaluated as the number three small business in the United States. Pretty good. Pretty good. A lot of yeah. publicity attached to that. It so wouldn't they, hurt your business mm -hmm. to be named and to have an award like that. Right. And the, we get commendations for the winners from the mayor, the congressional committee, uh, the, our congressional team recognizes them and often wants to come out or goes out to meet them or visit their businesses. Uh, as well, so it's uh, it can be as I said, it's a, a pretty heady award. It's pretty prestigious, 
Um, what, um, is, is there a, you know, if, if I decide I want to apply mm -hmm. and I fill out the form, and that's going to take me a little while to write it up in a mm -hmm. way that, that's accurate and, and um, you know, persuasive, um, how much of a commitment of time is it for me to go through this process? Well, once you write the nomination, you know, it's, you know, that, then the time is ours to kind of get through everything. And then it depends on what events um, and where the events are that you want to or elect to participate in. Um, because there is usually the, some of the travel costs are borne by the winner and things like that. We don't have that kind of sponsorship or mm -hmm. ability at this point to well, pay for that. Give me a physical award, a, a plaque, mm -hmm. a framed award, maybe some kind of trophy type award. Yeah, we give you a trophy. Uh, you, you do? Yeah? Oh. Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> and, and then we, if we put do it have, in my office. I'd like to look at it. And yeah. sometimes you have to build one of those I love me walls in your, in your home. <laughs> I or love your, walls. You know, because <laughs> there are recognitions and things like that because we do try to um, put it out there to, you know, the community as well about, as I said, you know, who who's who's doing these amazing, outstanding uh, things for do, our community and for their that employees. People, that some people win multiple awards. I mean, year after year they win an award. Does that happen? Um, not as much with our award categories. We have seen several people get over time multiple awards. For example, um, Tan Lam, who owns Latour Bakery, started as Ballet Sandwich Shop, uh, started a brand new business just making sandwiches, and his business has grown phenomenally. I he, remember the he, beginning. Yeah. He started with a small SBA loan to get his sandwich shop open and then started adding more. So Tan was a young entrepreneur of the year. As the business grew and he started getting more locations and, and uh, franchising it, he got bigger. He became the small business person of the year for the state of Hawaii. Then he won, that year he won the national award. He was the top small business person in the United States, basically, for developing his growth plan for the increase in number of employees, the increase in revenue, um, and all these, you know, kind of started this kid story. out of Vietnam. And now he, he and his sons, you know, have the big operation in the La Tour Cafes all over the place, but he was the top small yeah, business yeah. person in the United you, States. You've been following him with him. He's been, you know, in your family for oh, yes. a decade, many decades. You know. yeah. And so, and just how they've carried on that entrepreneurial tradition uh, and the commitment to a quality product. You know, he said when he first started out and he got that first loan, I want to be the best and the biggest bakery in Hawaii. You're making me you, hungry, Jenny. You know, I'm sorry. <laughs> But uh, he has a great story and a great business, so we're hoping to have him and his sons, you know, on this program That's soon. Great. That's soon. great. Is it a you know pay forward kind of thing where um, so I win in say 2016 and uh, in 2017 you call me up and say Jay, come on down and participate in giving the award to the next group of winners. I mean, is this a, an ongoing continuum? We have a lot of the winners continue to be involved with the program, and we have many of them. Um, you know, who have come on board to actually be judges as well. So there are different ways that they do participate. Um, sometimes they come on to into some of our workshops and our programs to, again, tell their story or share their expertise or, you know, that little thing that helped them differentiate themselves. So um, Dave Erdman, Ray Jardine, um, you know, yeah, it's, it's amazing people. Right, they, they become household names. Have done, done these or gone through these awards programs. So can we uh, shift gears and talk about the storms? Yes, I guess we better do that. Just an, and one more thing that we, we do. But uh, please, if you have any questions about the SBA awards, um, don't hesitate to contact our office. We're available at sba.gov backslash hi or hi. You know. <laughs> and get to see Jane, too. So, um, <laughs> but we'll be happy to talk to you about them and uh, give you some recommendations. But we do have the flip side is that we have uh, uh, Hurricane Madeline coming our way. Um, I guess she's up to a Category 4 and uh, expected to hit the Big Island. But one of the things a lot of people don't realize is what SBA's role is in disasters and disaster recovery. So, um, since 1953, we have been stepping right in with FEMA to help small businesses, big businesses, 
homeowners and renters recover from disaster. Oh. So FEMA does that first initial piece, but within two to three days, sometimes even sooner than that, SBA is on the ground. So we look That's at great. how we can really help small businesses get back to work, get their doors open again, get their employees does that mean back. Loans? What does that mean? It's SBA loans are pr uh, the primary. If you can't, um, initially FEMA may be helping with housing and some capital outlay, some cash to keep people going, get you, you know, food security, Red Cross steps in. But the next step in really initiating recovery is to get the resources available to get started again. So. Um, SBA will do um, long-term, low-interest loans. Special to disasters. Right. And, and usually it's a result of a declaration by the president. The governor will help bring in a team, and they come in. First thing SBA and FEMA do is start to assess the damage, go out into the communities and see what's really happened. How many homes are damaged? How many businesses have damaged? What, the, what is the, the evaluation of the damage? What's needed to get them going again? So. Um, Often a lot of people, the biggest thing they need to do is really prepare. And the time is now. It's not just getting water and batteries um, and filling the gas tank. You really need to take a look at where your identifying papers are. Um, you know, get, get some of those key accounts. Make sure your contact numbers. First and foremost, it's people. It's property. You know, because those losses can be hard to recover. If your people aren't taken care of, you can't open your doors again. So make sure you have a way to contact your people. Email may not be working. Make sure you know phone numbers. Um, make sure you have some addresses just in case you need to go and check on them. And hopefully you'd be able and willing to do that. First reaction is always we need to take our family and home. But um, your, your business is critically important too. Sure. Back up your computers, back up your documents, make dual copies, keep one, you know, and put them in a safe, dry place. Um, keep, keep a copy away from your business and maybe, mm -hmm. you know, with you or away from home or in a safety deposit box. Because um, yeah. all of these things, too, you're going to have to show what your ability is, what your capacity is. Because if you're going to ask for, okay, my building blew down in the storm, you're going to have to be able, and the contents are all gone, you're going to have to be able to justify a request for assistance as well. So you've got to have some documentation. You have to have that for your insurance anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. so, well, I wouldn't wish it on anybody, but um, you know, the possibility of another Iniki is right here, mm -hmm. a few days away, and uh, we've been lucky for the past few decades. Yes, we've been really uh, but lucky. It's, it's roulette, mm -hmm. and we could have a bad time anytime, especially with the increasing number and severity of storms and climate change. Mm -hmm. So I think we have to attend to these things. I'm really mm -hmm. happy you mentioned this yeah. because I think, uh, you know, the, you, can, you can survive, mm -hmm. you can live, you can eat, you can be okay, but you, you don't want to not have a business. At mm -hmm. the end of the day, you have to w have a way to continue and support yourself right. and, your, and your employees. And we've seen some really heartbreaking stories in the last couple of weeks with the floods and the other storms that have been going on for, you know, in the mainland. Yeah. Um, but we can, it can happen to us anytime. I'm very grateful we're a tiny little island out in the big, big ocean. So we've been very, very fortunate to miss. But do prepare, do be ready. Um, take a few minutes, go to sba.gov um, and look for disaster recovery or disaster readiness. Get a little checklist to help you along with your business as well as your home and take care of you and your family. We'll see you next week.